Welcome back. Journeys of Redemption, Exploring the Path of Repentance, Faith, and Wisdom. So good morning and welcome back to our Saint Study and Morning Readings, where we embark on a transmitted journey through the lives of saints and the wisdom of the scriptures. Today we dive into the stories of saints like Mary of Egypt and the timeless passages of Isaiah, Genesis, and Proverbs. Join me as we uncover the profound truths of faith, repentance, and divine wisdom that resonate across generations. Let us embark on this journey together seeking deeper understanding and spiritual enlightenment. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to ask the Lord. And now we're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, a loving master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and own up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn that you're having conquered simple desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You're Christ, our God, you are light. And to you we get glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. I'm going to start out with our saint study. I'll get our screen shared over. Get right to that. Thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoy these studies. Hope you're learning a lot. I learn with all of you each and every day. So we're going to start right here. Mary of Egypt. So here's. So I was able to do a little more digging, right? I like to try and use uh, some of my own words. So here is a picture of this, but I'm going to read from my notes. So we're starting out with Mary of Egypt. So Mary of Egypt, she was a revered saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church. She was known for her dramatic conversion and life of repentance. Born in Egypt in the 5th century, Mary lived a life of corruption and sin until at the age of 29. She experienced a profound conversion while on a, pil while on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. After her conversion, Mary retreated to the desert near the Jordan River, where she lived in solitude as an aesthetic for nearly 50 years, 47 years to be exact. Sustained only by prayer and the fruits of the desert, she celebrated for her extreme penitence and is considered a model of repentance and aestheticism. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our next saint. Eusius Sadu. So Eusius Sadu was a Russian Orthodox saint who lived in the 14th century. He founded the monastery of Anthony in Sadol, Russia. Antimius is remembered for his aesthetic life, piety, and devotion to prayer. He is revered as a wonder worker and a spiritual guide, known for his humility and compassion towards others. Drontos and Valadis, the martyrs. Drontos and Valadis were Christian martyrs who lived during the early centuries of Christianity. Only a little detailed historical information is available about them. They are remembered for their steadfast faith and willingness to endure persecution and martyrdom for their beliefs. Like many early Christian martyrs, their lives and sacrifices are commemorated and honored within the Orthodox Church as examples of courage and devotion to Christ. These saints rep represent the diversity of the Orthodox Christian tradition, showcasing different eras, regions, and expressions of faith within the church, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So first reading this morning, come out Isaiah. So Isaiah chapter 8, starting in verse 13, will end in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Listen attentively to the readings, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, the Lord of hosts, him you shall hollow. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. As a trap and snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble 
they shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Here I am, the children of whom the Lord has given me. We are the signs and wonders in Israel for the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. And when they say to you, seek those who are medium and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not the people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on the behalf of the living, to the law and to the testimony? If they do not speak according to his word, it is because there is no light in them. They will pass through the hard press and hunger, and it shall happen. When they are hungry, they will be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward. They will look to, to the earth and see trouble and darkness bloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness, the government of the promised son. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. As when at first he lightly esteemed, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her. By the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased his joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his, of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. As in the day of Median, for every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel for fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order and establish it with judgment and justice. For that time forward and even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So our reading this morning in Isaiah. What a beautiful way to start out. It's presenting a rich tapestry of spiritual teachings that resonate deeply with the stories of the saints like Mary of Egypt, and Euthmius of Sadol, Russia, and others. In Isaiah chapter 8, verses 13 through 14, it says, The Lord of hosts, him you shall hollow. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel, as a trap and snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In these verses, we see Isaiah urging the people to honor and revere the Lord above all else, recognizing what his sovereignty and power. However, Isaiah also warns of the consequences of rejecting what God's authority, just as the Lord can be a sanctuary for those who seek him. He can also become a stumbling block for those who refuse to what acknowledge him. This is evident in the lives of the saints like Mary of Egypt and the others we read about today, who initially stumbled into sin, but later found sanctuary and redemption through what? Repentance. Beautiful. In Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, stood out to me. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. For that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we see that these verses are prophesizing the birth of the divine Savior, whose reign will bring everlasting peace and justice. The titles attributed to the Savior, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Highlight his divine nature and his role in establishing God's kingdom here on earth. How can we establish this to our saints we read about today? It's through their unwavering faith and commitment to God. Embody the qualities foretold in Isaiah's prophecy. They serve as beacons of divine wisdom, counselors of righteousness, and agents of peace in a world that was marred by sin and strife. Back in Isaiah, 
chapter 8, verse 14. It says, He will be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel as a trap and a snare of inhabitants of Jerusalem. These verses parallel the New Testament particular in 1 Peter chapter 2. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient. The stone which the builders reject has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. So where Jesus here, Christ, is described as a cornerstone for believers and a stumbling block for those who reject him. Just as Isaiah prophesies, Jesus' life and teachings would evoke varied responses, serving as a test of faith for all who encounter him. Beautiful. Our reading in Isaiah this morning provides a profound framework for understanding the spiritual journey of saints and the overarching plan of redemption revealed through Jesus Christ. Just as the people of Isaiah's time were called to honor and revere God, so we are all called to embrace his grace and guidance like the saints before us. We may, find, we, might, we may find sanctuary in God's presence and proclaim his peace to a world needing hope and salvation. Genesis chapter 6, starting in verse 9, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Noah pleases God. This is, a gene, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt. For all the flesh had corrupted their way on earth. <clears throat> the ark prepared. And God said to Noah, the end of all the flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits. And it's high 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark. You shall finish it. And you shall finish it to a, to a cubit from above. And set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself, I'm bringing floodwaters on earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh. In which is the breath of life. Everything that is on this earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark. You, your sons your wife and your son's wives with you. And of every living thing of, of all flesh, you shall bring two every sword into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds and after their kind of animals, after their kind and of every creepy thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you, to keep them alive. You shall take for yourself all food that is eaten. You shall gather yourselves and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So in verse 13, it stood out to me. And it says, And God said to Noah, The ends of all the flesh had come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God is speaking to Noah. This verse, revealing his judgment upon humanity due to his persuasive wickedness and violence. Despite his sorrow over humanity's state, God declares his intention to bring about a great flood to cleanse the earth of all of its corruption. And right here in verse 13, we find a parallel in the New Testament, particular, particularly in Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Did not know until the flood came and took them all away. And so also will the coming of Son of Man be. So there will be a lot of violence, just like in Noah's time. right? So the signs to watch out for. right? So Jesus' words. right? So here. Jesus draws a comparison between the days of Noah and the coming judgment. Jesus' words echo the judgment pronounced by God in Genesis, underscoring the significance of Noah's story as a warning of impending judgment and the need for repentance. So we are to watch out, right? Right? We're giving these warnings here. Noah's narrative 
proactively reminds us of the consequences of sin and the importance of righteousness and the obedience to God's commands. Like in saints like Mary of Egypt and the others we read about today, they stood as beacons of faithfulness and righteousness amidst a world of moral decay and violence. Their lives witness the enduring truth that God's judgment upon sin is inevitable. Yet his mercy and grace are extended to those who walk in obedience and faith. Genesis, our readings here in Genesis this morning, especially with verse 13, as a focal point, advise us to reflect on humanity's moral state and the divine judgment that follows unrepentant sins. Just as Noah found favor in God's eyes in this corrupt generation, so can we find refuge and salvation through faith and obedience. May we heed the wordings of scripture and the examples of saints turning from sin and embracing God's mercy and grace, just like Noah and all the saints before us. Beautiful. Our last reading this morning. In Proverbs, the excellence of wisdom, name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on top of the hill, the high hill, the size, the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be of understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things. And from the opening of my lips will come right things. From my mouth will speak truth, wickedness and abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands. <clears throat> and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction. And not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I'm understanding I have strength by me king's reign. And rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me digitally will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring, ri enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I, trans I transverse the ways of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may feel the treasuries named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So verse one stuck out to me right away. Right? So right away when I was doing my study, verse one, because it says, does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice. So in this verse, wisdom is personified as a divine entity. Does that make sense? Crying out and lifting her voice to impart understanding to humanity. It speaks to accessibility and the universality of wisdom, which is available to all those who seek him earnestly. The concept of wisdom calling out humanity finds parallels in other biblical passages, such as right here in Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a gluten and a wine beaver, a friend of tax collectors, sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. You can also look at Luke, chapter 11, verse 49. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. These verses highlight the personification of wisdom and this role in calling people to righteousness and understanding. Let's look at verse 17 in Proverbs. And it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me digitally will find me. Here, wisdom expresses love for those who love her and, prom and promises that those who earnestly seek her, talk about him, right? This verse underscores the reciprocal relationship between humanity and knowledge, where sincere pursuit is met with fulfillment. We can also see, let's look at James, chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, 
will draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. These verses from James echo the, set of, the sentiment we see in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, emphasizing the importance of seeking God with vigilance and sincerity. Both passages convey that the earnest pursuit of wisdom or wisdom or God leads to a deeper relationship and understanding. In Proverbs, in verse 19, and it says, My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice, silver. Wisdom praises her value, declaring that her benefits far surpass material wealth. This verse highlights the incomparable worth of wisdom and the comparison to worldly riches. I like what it says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the passage from Matthew improvises the importance of, it's improvising not to put all your trust in what earthly treasures. It encourages the pursuit of what spiritual riches. It resonates with the sentiment that we see in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19, highlighting the superior value of wisdom over material possessions. In conclusion to Proverbs, it offers profound insights into the nature and importance of wisdom, portraying it as a divine guide accessible to all who earnestly seek it. The parallels and other biblical passages underscore the timeless, re timeless relevance of wisdom's call and its, un and, and its incomparable worth in pursuing righteousness and spiritual understanding. May we heed wisdom's call digitally, seek her, and treasure her above all else, knowing that in her lies the path of true fulfillment and eternal blessings. As we conclude this morning, of our exploration of the lives of the saints and the timeless wisdom of Proverbs. Let us be reminded of the transmitted power of seeking after divine wisdom, just as our saints this morning responded to the call of wisdom. We are also called to heed its voice and ours. May we, may we, like these saints, have the courage to turn away from the folly of this world and earnestly pursue the path of righteousness and understanding let us remember that true wisdom is not merely intellectual knowledge, but a living, breathing relationship with the creator of the universe. As we journey forward, may we lift our voices in praise and admiration, seeking wisdom with all our hearts. May the fruits of our pursuit be evident in the lives marked by holiness, compassion, and unwavering faith. May God's wisdom guide us, sustain us, and lead us ever closer to the eternal treasures found in his presence. Amen. And the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. That's where we'll end this morning. Hope you enjoyed the study. All right. Good, good. Blessing and prayer. Get out of here this morning. Thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoyed the study. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and now and forever, the sages. Amen. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. All together, the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, power, glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. All right. I love you all. I'm out.